There is good news, which is less people dying. There is also bad news, and the bad news is the economic losses are going through the roof. We've just got more and more property, people, assets, infrastructure in, in hazard-prone locations. We need to redefine how risk is measured and understood in a global economy, and at the same time understand that undermining natural wealth or the natural disasters that do come along is also connected to financial instability. The economies of a lot of the small island developing states, whether it's in the Caribbean, in the Pacific, in the Indian Ocean, um, typically depend on tourism income for the value of 40, 60, 80 percent or more of their exports. So what this means is that you know, a disaster in the tourism industry is not just a disaster for the hotels and for the people who own the hotels and the resorts, it becomes a disaster for the economy as a whole. For example, the increase in urban flooding has a lot to do precisely with how we plan cities, not with nature, but against nature. The studies we've done in this report tend to show that in general, there's still fairly weak incentives for actually getting disaster risk factored into urban development. A lot of this investment is going into areas where the hazard, drought for example, poorly understood, poorly modelled, poorly mapped. So it's very difficult I think for these companies to calculate the risks to themselves.